Hey, my friends, Marlon Gibbons here. Thank you for joining me at Music in the Making. Today's topic uh, is kind of inspired by a few questions I received, actually several questions I received that all have a similar, uh, they all kind of point to a, a, a similar topic, which is how do you make a living in music? And, you know, the, the questions vary from, you know, how many songs do I need in my catalog, you know, as, as it relates to licensing and that kind of thing. Um, how many years were you doing this before you could do it full time? Um, and then just a bunch of different questions that all kind of end up being the same thing, which is how do you do it full time? So I thought what I would do is rather than give you, you know, a specific strategy or blueprint or that kind of thing, I thought I would just kind of share with you my experience and hopefully you can pull some points um, from it that, that you can relate to if doing music full time is in fact what you'd like to achieve. There's a few statistics out there floating around um, as it relates to making a living in, in music, in the music industry. Um, I'm not going to quote any of those stats because I, I didn't do any fact checking and I really don't know. I just, I know that it's, it's a small number um, that, of people that make a living in, in music. So in knowing that, why in the hell did I quit a 15 year job with a corporation, great hours, didn't work weekends, full benefits, decent pay, crazy, right? Who does that? But I did. I wasn't pushed out. I left that job to pursue music full time. It was more scary at the time because I didn't know what was in store. And and although I just kind of made it sound like, like I just one day decided to quit, that's not the case. Um, it was a couple of years in planning. So let me just talk to you about a few points that I considered leading up to to that jump. And I think it's important that I throw in a disclaimer here too. I'm not advocating that you leave your job. I don't know your financial situation. So this is, and, and we could be very different. You may need three times as much money as, as me to address your financial responsibilities and, the, and that kind of thing. So this video is just meant to kind of share my experience and maybe you can relate to it. So just consider things in, in, uh, in a real world as it relates to you. Some of my points may help you and, and may not. One, I saved, I saved, 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 reduced my spending and I saved. You need to consider that new piece of gear that you want or the new computer or new piece of equipment, whatever it is, you really need to consider whether it's a want or a need. Will it bring value? Will it help you make more money? Will it pay for itself? Will you get a return on investment? That kind of thing. Um, you know, often it's hard for creatives to think analytically, but you really need to try and put that hat on it and, and think about um, if this is a goal that you're trying to achieve, money counts and you really need to build up that, that safety net or that nest egg. So consider, um, do you need or want that new piece of gear, that new software? Over that two years, of course the money thing, I saved and, and did all that stuff, but I built up my music catalog. I, I wrote music and I wrote music and I wrote music so that when that day came, I would have a catalog of music um, which was essentially equity. It was a, a value. I could use that to leverage income. So um, I built up the catalog. I worked, I worked evenings and weekends. Thankfully, I have a really supportive wife and family that, that um, was great about that because I was putting in a lot of hours. Um, I don't know your situation, but that really helped me. Um, I would do the nine to five thing and I would work in the evenings and work on the weekends. And uh, the other part of that over that two years is I really, really worked hard to build those relationships, um, well, potential clients for, for when I was self-employed. So, so these are all things that you can do if you still have a day job right now. Um, build those clients, work hard to build your catalog, uh, save and really watch your spending. If you're gonna buy something new um, and, and try and convince yourself that it's, it's a value to your studio, you really need to, to consider if, if it really is or if you just want it. And the other thing as it relates to planning is I did, I don't know, probably three or four different business plans throughout that, that time um, and they changed every time. I even took a course on how to write a business plan um, as it relates to you know finances and and your you know your your future 
long-term goals and your short-term goals. Um, you need to look at your competition and how to sustain uh, different sources of income and revenue. And um, I mean, you guys all know what a business plan is. If you don't, it's definitely worth looking into because again, I know we're all creatives. We're creating music and that's great, but there really is a business side of this. Um, and it's much bigger and more in depth than I ever had um, anticipated. It, it really, you really need to know. Um, you really need to know that administrative side of, of running a business. And even once I jumped and I was self-employed for a couple of years, um, a lot of things that I wrote in those business plans that I thought would be a certain way, it, it wasn't, it wasn't at all. So, and I guess the last piece of advice I would give is that um, be able to adapt to change or, or things that you didn't expect because uh, they're going to happen for sure. That, that's a big thing is that I had all these ideas of how it would play out and a lot of things did fall into place um, because I, I intentionally went after them um, but a lot of things I didn't expect. Um, I was told it would be a roller coaster because sometimes you have work coming in and sometimes you don't so you need to um, have a nest egg for that um, but there's just the emotion of it. You can't really anticipate what the emotion of it is until it's 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 not a drill anymore. It's the real thing. Another thing I, I didn't anticipate is is what it feels like to to really be in this situation where if you don't get out of bed, there's no money coming in. That this is how you pay your bills. It's all well and good to try and guess what that might be like while well, you have a safety net, you have a full time job, um, but it's it's really different when it's not a drill anymore and you're in this situation. It's that incentive of I better hustle or there's no money coming in. So that, that can be a good thing too. The thing to consider too is multiple streams of income. I don't know what your specialty is or what your other side talents are, um, but for myself, I've done a ton of really mundane jobs like editing dialogue or, or just doing other media jobs that aren't necessarily what you really want to be doing, but you have to consider that, you know, uh, your worst day in the studio is still better than your best day, you know, in a job that you really don't like. So consider multiple streams of, of income, uh, not just one specific goal. You know, you might have to swallow your pride because it, you may only have one thing you want to do, but what helped me um, was having multiple streams of income in that, uh, in that you know, I've spoken to different groups, I have uh, do live music. Um, I, I never got into the teaching thing, but, but it was certainly consideration. I've worked with different youth groups. I've done some really mundane, <laughs> editing audio editing that just it's not really creative but it's in the realm of of you know my equipment in my studio and in and in, in that kind of world be prepared maybe maybe it's helping maybe it's collaborating with someone else producing another track and i guess the last thing that i didn't anticipate is how much work goes into it you know i thought when i had the day job and i was working in the evenings and the weekends and stuff um it, you know if i if i kind of look at all those hours I put in, including the day job, it still wasn't as much or as many hours as I put in now. I work longer and harder now than I ever did, even when I had the day job. Um, but I love it. That's the difference. It's I wake up early in the morning, up at five o'clock, 5.30, um, I have my coffee and I'm excited to get to the studio and start writing or, or doing whatever I have to do. Um, and not every job or thing I have to do is as fun as the next, but I love working for myself. I love writing music, um, playing live. It's a really great and rewarding thing, but just be aware it, it's a lot of work and you really, it really helps to have a supportive family uh, and supportive friends around you that, that cheer you on. Because trust me, there's, there's a lot of people out there too that will tell you you can't do it, that it's ridiculous um, to think that you could make a living on music. Um, and they'll tell you all the reasons why too. They'll tell you how the industry is, is, is failing, it's falling and that, you know, er everything's declining, you know, a couple points ago, remember what I said, adapt, um, just be prepared to adapt to things that, uh, that change. I mean, that's not, I mean, that's not my piece of advice you'll hear that. That's just a solid, very common piece of business advice is just adapt to change. Right? So that's, that's that. So my friends, thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope I didn't ramble too much there and that you were able to pull out some points that might help you, might not. Hit me in the comments if you have any questions. 
I, I know there's a lot of you out there that would love to make, even if not pursuing music full time, um, at least still making money from your music. So hit me in the comments. I'd be happy to uh, at least try and answer some of your questions. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll talk to you next week.